Anime has grown in popularity tremendously over the years, which made me spark up the question, why are we seeing all this growth? Today I'm going to be covering how anime made its mark on society all across the world and the history of how anime originated. I'll also be going over some of the most influential series, in my opinion, to garner the worldwide attention anime has seen in the 21st century. To begin, there are two forms of storytelling that were the main catalysts for the development of anime. These two forms of storytelling are called emakimono and kage. Emakimono or emaki is an illustrated horizontal narration system of painted hand scrolls that dates back to Nara period Japan. It was mainly inspired from their Chinese counterparts in style during the Heian and Kamakura periods of Japan. Emakimono was common in the 11th century. Traveling storytellers narrated legends and anecdotes while the imakimono was unrolled from the right to left with chronological order as a moving panorama. Kage are puppet shows and it's used as an ancient form of storytelling and entertainment which uses flat articulated cutout figures which are held between a source of light and a translucent screen or scrim. Kage was popular during the Edo period and originated from the shadows play of China. Magic lanterns from the Netherlands were also popular in the 18th century as well. The paper play called Kamishibai surged in the 12th century and remained popular in the street theater until the 1930s. Puppets of the Bunraku Theater and Ukiyo-e Prince are considered ancestors of characters of most Japanese animations. Finally, mangas were probably the biggest inspiration for anime out of all these things because most anime are based on a manga and cartoonists Kitzawa Rakuten and Okamoto Ipe normalized using film elements in their comic strips. Animation in Japan began in the early 20th century when filmmakers started to experiment with techniques pioneered in France, Germany, the United States, and Russia. A claim for the earliest Japanese animation is Katsudo Shashin, a private work by an unknown creator. In 1917, the first professional and publicly displayed works began to appear. Animators such as Oten Shimokawa, Seitaro Kitayama, and Junichi Kochi produced numerous films, the oldest surviving of which is Kochi's Namakura Gatana. Many early works were lost with the destruction of Shimokawa's warehouse in the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake. By the mid-1930s, animation was well established in Japan as an alternative format to the live action industry. It suffered competition from foreign producers such as Disney and many animators including Noburo Ofuji and Yasuji Murata and continued to work with cheaper cutout animation rather than cell animation. Other creators including Kenzo Masaoka and Mitsuyo So nevertheless made great strides in technique benefiting from the patronage of the government, which employed animators to produce educational shorts and propaganda. In 1940, the government dissolved several artists' organizations to form the Shin Nippon Mangaka Kyokai. The first talkie anime was Chikara to Ona no Yo no Naka, a short film produced by Masaoka. The first feature-length anime film was Momotaro, Sacred Sailors, in 1945, produced by So with a sponsorship from the Imperial Japanese Navy. The 1950s saw a proliferation of short animated advertisements created for television. In the 1960s, manga artist and animator Osamu Tezuka adapted and simplified Disney animation techniques to reduce costs and limit frame counts in his productions. Originally intended as temporary measures to allow him to produce material on a tight schedule with an inexperienced staff, many of his limited animation practices came to define the whole anime industry's style. Three Tales in 1960 was the first anime film broadcasted on television. The first anime television series was called Instant History, 
from 1961 to 1964. An early influential success was Astro Boy from 1963 to 1966, a television series directed by Tezuka based on his manga. Many animators at Tezuka's Mushi production later established major anime studios including Madhouse, Sunrise, and P. Rowe. The 1970s saw growth in the popularity of manga, many of which were later animated. Tezuka's work and that of other pioneers in the field inspired characteristics and genres that remain fundamental elements of anime today. The giant robot genre, also known as the mecha genre, for instance, took shape under Tezuka and was revolutionized at the end of the decade by Yoshiyuki Tomino. Robot anime series such as Gundam and Super Dimension Fortress Macross became instant classics in the 1980s, and the genre remained one of the most popular in the following decades. The bubble economy of the 1980s spurred a new era of high-budget and experimental anime films, including Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, Royal Space Force, The Wings of Honmaiz, and Akira. Neon Genesis Evangelion, a television series produced by Gainax and directed by Hideaki Anno, began another era of experimental anime titles, such as Ghost in the Shell in 1995 and also Cowboy Bebop in 1998. In the 1990s, anime also began attracting greater interest in Western countries. Major international successes include Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, both of which were dubbed into more than a dozen languages worldwide. In 2003, Spirited Away, a Studio Ghibli film directed by Hayao Miyazaki, won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature at the 75th Academy Awards. It later became the highest grossing anime film, earning more than $355 million in USD. Since the 2000s, an increased number of anime works have been adaptations of light novels and visual novels. Successful examples include The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya and Fate Stay Night, both of which were made in 2006. Demon Slayer Mungen Train later became the highest grossing Japanese film and one of the world's highest grossing films of 2020. It also became the fastest growing film in Japanese cinema because in 10 days it made 10 billion yen or $95.3 million USD. It beat the record of Spirited Away and it only took 25 days for Demon Slayer to beat the record after being released. Before I get into what I think are the most influential anime I'm going to talk about, I want to give a list of honorable mentions that I could have easily interexchanged with any other anime in this part but there are just so many popular anime that I mainly wanted to just choose a few uh, to limit the length of this video. All right, so the honorable mentions include Death Note, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, One Punch Man, My Hero Academia, Hunter x Hunter, One Piece, and Sword Art Online. I chose this group of anime just because I feel like it encompasses a good amount of the popularity of the modern genre, as well as just being known outside of the anime world, because I'm sure if you ask anyone on the street, they've probably heard of at least one of these shows. Maybe not, but they've probably heard of at least one of these shows, or they just know a reference of something from one of these shows because of their popularity. But without further ado, I'm going to start into the four anime that I think are the modern classics. The first anime I want to talk about is one I mentioned earlier. Neon Genesis Evangelion was a landmark anime for the industry because of how successful and innovative it was at the time. Neon Genesis Evangelion, also just known as Eva or Evangelion, is a Japanese mecha anime TV series produced by Gainax and animated by Tatsunoko, directed by Hideaki Anno and broadcast on TV Tokyo from October 1995 to March 1996. Evangelion is set 15 years after a worldwide cataclysm called the Second Impact, particularly in the futuristic fortified city of Tokyo 3. The protagonist Inji Ikari, a teenage boy who is recruited by his father Gendo to the shadowy organization Nerve to pilot a giant biomachine mecha named Evangelion into combat against beings known as angels. The series explores the experiences and emotions of Evangelion pilots and members of Nerve 
as they try to prevent angels from causing more cataclysms. In the process, they are called upon to understand the ultimate causes of events and the motives for human action. The series has been described as a deconstruction of the mecha genre, and it features archetypal imagery derived from Shinto cosmology, as well as Jewish and Christian mystical traditions, including Midrashic tales and Kabbalah. The psychoanalytic accounts of human behavior put forward by Freud and Jung are also prominently featured in Evangelion. Evangelion received critical acclaim, but was also subject to controversy, particularly controversy centered on the final two episodes of the series, as the ending was deemed confusing and abstract to many viewers and critics alike. In 1997, Hideaki Anno and Gainax released the feature film The End of Evangelion, which serves as an alternate ending replacing the final two episodes. A series of four films titled Rebuild of Evangelion, retelling the events of the series with different plot elements and a new ending, were released between 2007 and 2021. Film, manga, home video, and other products in the Evangelion franchise have achieved record sales in Japanese markets and strong sales in overseas markets, with related goods selling over 150 billion yen by 2007 and Evangelion Pachinko machines generating over $700 billion by 2015. Another anime to go down with a legendary history is Naruto. Naruto is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Masashi Kishimoto. It tells the story of Naruto Uzumaki, a young ninja who seeks recognition from his peers and dreams of becoming the Hokage, which is the leader of his village. The story is told in two parts. The first set is in Naruto's preteen years and the second in his teens. The series is based on two one-shot manga by Kishimoto called Karakuri, which earned Kishimoto an honorable mention in Shueisha's monthly Hop Step Award the following year, and of course Naruto in 1997. Naruto was serialized in Shueisha's Shonen Manga magazine Weekly Shonen Jump from 1999 to 2014. With its chapters collected in 72 Tonkobone volumes, the manga was adapted into an anime TV series produced by Piero and Aniplex, which broadcast 220 episodes from 2002 to 2007. The English dub of the series aired on Cartoon Network and YTV from 2005 to 2009. Naruto Shippuden, a sequel to the original series, premiered in 2007 and ended in 2017 after 500 episodes. The English dub was broadcast on Disney XD from 2009 to 2011, airing the first 98 episodes, and then later switched over to Adult Swim's Toonami programming block in January 2014, starting over from the first episode. Viz Media began streaming the anime series on their streaming service Neon Alley in December 2012 on 99 episodes, and ended in March 2016 after 338 episodes. Besides the anime series, Piero has developed 11 movies and 12 OVAs. Other Naruto-related merchandise includes light novels, video games, and trading cards developed by several companies. Viz Media licensed the manga and anime for North American production and serialized Naruto in their digital weekly Shonen Jump magazine. The anime series began airing in the United States and Canada in 2005, and in the United Kingdom and Australia in 2006 and 2007 respectively. The films and most OVAs from the series were also released by Viz, with the first film premiering in movie theaters. The story of Naruto continues with Naruto's son, Boruto Uzumaki, in Boruto Naruto Next Generations, which is still releasing, and Boruto wishes to create his own ninja way instead of following his father's. Naruto is one of the best-selling manga series in history, having 250 million copies in circulation worldwide in 47 countries and regions with 153 million copies in Japan alone and the remaining 97 million copies elsewhere around the world. It has become one of Viz Media's best-selling manga series. Their English translations of the volumes have appeared on USA Today and the New York Times bestseller list several times and the seventh volume won a Quill Award in 2006. Reviewers praised the manga's character development, strong storylines, and well-executed action sequences, though some felt the latter slowed the story down. 
Critics noted that the manga, which has a coming of age theme, makes use of cultural references from Japanese mythology and Confucianism. The third anime I'm going to talk about has become a modern staple as well as another controversial one due to the mixed reviews of the ending, kind of like Evangelion. This anime is none other than Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Hajime Isayama. It is set in a world where humanity is forced to live in cities surrounded by three enormous walls that protect them from gigantic man-eating humanoids referred to as titans. The story follows Aaron Yeager who vows to exterminate the titans after they bring about the destruction of his hometown and the death of his mother. It was serialized in Kodansha's monthly magazine, Basatsu Shonen Magazine, from September 2009 to April 2021, with its chapters collected in 34 Tonkobone volumes. An anime TV series was produced by Wit Studio for seasons 1 through 3 and MAPPA for season 4. The 25 episode first season was broadcast from April to September 2013, followed by the 12 episode second season, broadcast from April to June 2017. And then a 22 episode third season was broadcast into two parts with the first 12 episodes airing from july to october 2018 and the last 10 episodes airing from april to july 2019. the fourth and final season premiered in december 2020 airing 16 episodes in its first part the second part of the final season consisting of 12 episodes aired from january to april 2022 and a third and a final part will air in two halves the first half premiered in March 2023, and the second half will premiere later in 2023. Attack on Titan has become a critical and commercial success. By September 2022, the manga had over 110 million copies in circulation, making it one of the best-selling manga series of all time. It has won several awards, including the Kodansha Manga Award and the Attilio Michelusi Award and the Harvey Award. The last anime I'm going to talk about is probably the face of modern anime at this point, and that would be none other than Demon Slayer, which is also my favorite anime. Demon Slayer is a Japanese manga series written by Koyoharo Gotoge. It was serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump from February 2016 to May 2020, with its chapters collected in 23 volumes. It has been published in English by Viz Media and simultaneously published by Shueisha on their Manga Plus platform. It follows the teenage Tanjiro Kamado, who strives to become a demon slayer after his family was slaughtered and his younger sister Nezuko turned into a demon. A 26 episode anime TV series produced by UFO Table aired from April to September 2019, and a sequel film, Demon Slayer The Mungan Train, was released in October 2020, and like I mentioned earlier, it became the highest grossing anime film and Japanese film of all time. The 18 episode second season of the anime series aired from October 2021 to February 2022. It featured one original episode, but then also re-edited the Mungan Train arc into six episodes, and then covered the new arc, the Entertainment District arc, from the manga in 11 episodes. A compilation film, Demon Slayer to the Swordsmith Village, was released in February 2023, while a third season covering the Swordsmith Village arc aired from April to June 2023. A fourth season covering the Hashira training arc has also been announced. By February 2021, the manga had over 150 million copies in circulation, including digital versions, making it the ninth best-selling manga series of all time. Also, it was the best-selling manga in 2019 and 2020. Both the manga and its anime adaptation have received critical acclaim. The anime series has received numerous awards and is considered one of the best animes of the 2010s. In 2020, the Demon Slayer Kometsu no Yaiba franchise generated an estimated annual sales revenue of 1 trillion yen or $8.75 billion, becoming one of the highest grossing media franchises of all time. Anime has come a tremendous way over the years, cultivating the whole world's attention with flashy visuals, beautiful storytelling, and entertaining characters. Overall, anime has left a huge mark on the world, and it wouldn't be the same without it. Almost anyone in the world at this point can recognize an anime reference or something related to an anime without even having the need to watch anything. 
What anime are you going to watch next? I've still been on the grind of finishing Attack on Titan, but I'll move on to something else soon. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.